Everything's bland. Bland. It's bland. Bland as well. Uh, no, stop. We could end it right here, but I'm gonna explain some things first. The Division is Ubisoft's latest Tom Clancy game, and you know, the guy being dead hasn't stopped them from making way more games with his name on them. Now, some of these games are pretty liked, others... Uh, uh, but The Division's being marketed as the second coming of Christ, or Clancy. They're like, six million people in a beta, two betas. So, is it a new Tom Clancy classic? No. Let's move on. Now I checked out the store page, and the first thing I noticed is the game has been DIVIDED into two versions. The regular version, and the gold edition. What's the difference? The gold edition comes with a season pass. That means they already have stuff planned out for the future. Now if you're on console, this part's not important to you, but Ubisoft made sure to include some PC exclusive features, so that a bunch of living air mattresses on PC Master Race wouldn't make memes of them. You're not gonna stop these guys! They do this for a living! Okay, so what are some of these things you get? Well, you get unlimited frame rate, uh, the ability to use your mouse and keyboard, and text chat. So basically features that games have been having for roughly 20 or so years now. Microsoft Excel has a lot of these too. You also get Uplay for no charge. It's conveniently on every second. Now that we have everything surrounding the division out of the way, let's talk about the game itself. The game threatens my life, but then it takes me to a pretty decent character creator. After some brief tutorials and cutscenes, I was now in the game. This is bullshit. The graphics quality start at medium, but I decided to test it by setting everything to low. So, when I did that, my FPS was somewhere around, you know, between 30 and 40. Not the best, but not awful. So I set it all to high. And the FPS was around 30 to 40 still, but it looked better. What's up with that? Why not? This, this is a bear. It's also around the corner, but uh, they can't reveal a bear. It's not from my face yet. Uh, the game would release in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Buddy disconnected from your channel. Okay, so the reasoning for that- Oh Jesus, he's in the house! So, uh, I've been convinced to tell you this isn't a traditional beta. You probably think it's not fair I'm reviewing a beta? Well, let me explain. Now, back in the day when big AAA games started having open betas, it was actually for the purpose of testing. You know, you'd have a lot of people come in, see if the network connectivity was good, see what bugs there were. It would be months or even years before the game came out. It was basically a massive QA test. You know, just seeing if everything was working right. And on top of this, your game got free publicity. Everyone wanted to be in the Halo 3 beta, but they were serving the same purpose as something else you might have heard of. These were called... demo discs. And they were used to demo the game. The thing is, companies figured out that if you call it a beta, you could excuse any single problem in it as just being, you know, in development. This is also why a lot of E3 events like listing their footage as being alpha or pre-alpha. It makes people think that it's just the beginning, they're gonna do so much more! But in reality, it's not really true. Nowadays, if you're a AAA company, and you release a beta that's not polished, you're gonna get a lot of crap. So some companies won't release anything, because they're too afraid that people are gonna poop all over it for not being a perfect beta. And that doesn't make any sense. So we have to be honest here. Besides adding the extra content and fixing some bugs, this game isn't going to go through a miracle change in two weeks. So this is the Division demo. This is what they're using to wow the player and make them want to play it. So what do they have for us? Let's get back on track with the graphics. Yeah, there was a downgrade, and if you know Ubisoft at all, this really shouldn't be a big surprise to you. Especially since it was visibly looking worse with every E3 demo they were showing since the reveal. Now, this doesn't mean at all that the game is ugly, since it's still pretty good looking. There's some amazing technical graphics with the lighting, the snow, and a lot of the other weather effects. But at the same time, it makes you wonder what we could have had if they had, you know, continued to try and bring it up to that level they had before. I don't know, maybe they gave it their hardest. So the final word in the graphics are, they're pretty, but they're not as optimized as they should be. I could play it on Ultra alright with occasional hiccups, but for this review, I'm playing it out on high. That way it'll keep it stable most of the time. Now, let's get into the gameplay. The first thing I noticed is that you can't kill civilians. I thought that was kind of weird since the director said this game was an RPG first and foremost, and that your choices will matter. So to not have something so small is pretty baffling. 
bunch of useless coins. It was right after this that I encountered the first enemies of the game, called the Rioters. Now, we'll talk more about them later, but I couldn't help noticing the movement felt really floaty and weird. It really reminded me of Mass Effect 1. Maybe this is more of that RPG first and foremost thing. Now, the cover-based shooting is good, but it's not as good as, say, Gears of War. It keeps reminding me of Mass Effect. It's the out-of-cover movement that hurts it the most. This is also one of those games where if you roll around, you go slightly faster than you do sprinting. I tested it. Start. One. good practice for Dark Souls. You get introduced to your base mechanics pretty early on. Upgrading your base is actually what gives you new abilities, perks, and other things. And they're divided up into three wings. These are called the Tank, Healer, and DPS wings. I mean, Security, Medical, and Tech wings. To upgrade the wings, you need supplies. And you get those mainly through missions. Once you do upgrade a wing, you get new skills, perks, and talents. Now, your skills are your active abilities, but they have a bit of a twist on them. You could equip two of them at a time, but you could also do them from any tree you want. So you could have a tank and a DPS skill at once, or a DPS and a healing, you know, whatever. But each of these skills can also be modified. Like, an example, your turret could be altered with a flamethrower upgrade so that it has a shorter range but does more damage, or you could have a built-in scanner to it so you can see enemies coming from further away and help out your team. Personally, I think the system is great. It also means a well-rounded team can combine a lot of their skills and make some really interesting combinations. We'll get more into teams later. Now, talents are also passives, but they're triggered by things. Like, if you're a medic, you might shoot someone in the head and then everyone gets healed a little bit. You can equip four of these at a time. Finally, there's your perks. And those are your true passives. You're sporty them in the game, once you unlock them, they're always on forever. So you have a lot of character customization. Time to do the missions and get unlocking them. It looks like they've got people upstairs, in a restaurant. Warning. Additional hostiles incoming. Let's talk about bullet sponges. You've been waiting for this Destiny comparison for a while. This game is really similar to Destiny. Now, Destiny had some notorious bullet sponge bosses and enemies, but in the very least they were like big monsters or robots or aliens. There were at least something fantastical that your brain could kind of say, okay, that should take a lot of bullets to kill. But in this, it's just some guy with a hoodie. They're just, they're all people in hoodies. They're different colored hoodies and they take more magazines than an attack helicopter. And you know what's even worse? This is just the normal difficulty. In the hard mode, they just spawn more of them, and they have even more health and more armor. Jesus Christ! Oh. I don't get it. We're not killing monsters, just people wearing thug life clothes. Yeah. Also, why are they all black people? Like, the Rioter trailer had them as, like, all white guys, but now it's all black people. I mean, maybe I saw a white guy in a cafe near Madison Square Gardens, but that's still 99% black people I'm killing. I can't enjoy the Big Apple without crackers. Where's the diversity, Ubisoft? This is how you get gators. Wait, is that why they call it the Dark Zone? I don't know, maybe Ubisoft is right about crime rates, not me. I'm not the expert on these things. But I'm an expert. Who are you? Dimitri, do you know this guy? Uh, no. I don't know anybody else. I was born in an abandoned humble dryer. For some puppies. I don't know who the fuck this Dimitri is, and I'm the game statistic. The black guy that does statistics. Ergo, I'm the most politically correct option you have for talking about this shit. Well, damn, let him talk. We'll make the next big gaming controversy, and we'll make like $100,000 on Patreon. I'm gonna use charts and shit to show you how ludicrous these spawn rates are. I'm gonna go get some orange juice. Just, just let him do whatever he's gonna do. I'm not gonna use 
charts and shit. As hilarious as this is, actual crime rates as reported by the NYPD at the end of 2015 show African Americans to be the suspect of almost half the crime in New York. Now that's actually not how it's interpreted, but they're still the most arrested people by a tiny margin. The suspect category are incidents where the race of the people are known prior to arrest, either through reports or by an officer. See, the NYPD knows the race of the suspect about like 50% of the time when a crime is reported. About half the time someone answers, yeah, I know the race of the guy. It's a black guy. Just because they're a suspect doesn't mean they're guilty though. That's why some of these numbers fluctuate both up and down going from the suspect category to the arrestee category. There are more white, Hispanic, and Asians arrested than suspects of a crime, while black guys are just more likely to be suspected as opposed to arrested. I guess this is kind of like a Zambambo game or something, so like a lot of the people are dead. It says here on the script and getting paid to read that I'm just supposed to assume that like 90% of NYC is dead, and that's supposed to somehow affect the spread of the crime distribution. But if like 90% of the people die at random, and no one race is prone to dying than the other, then these figures shouldn't really change that much. I checked on the US Census Bureau for some quick population demographics, finding that like 70% of NYC is some kind of white person. Roughly 18% is black, 8.5% is Asian, and the rest are... don't fucking matter. But if you just mix them and throw them into the city, and we just assume that 90% of them, well, die? Yeah, white people are gonna be the main victims, but the other people are gonna lose out too. Unless I know where this incident that wiped out the NYC took place. What game am I even reporting? Is it zombies? Was it nuclear warfare? Did zombies spawn in the Bronx? Long Beach? What's even going on? Was okay, it like he sounds kind of drunk, and that's ruining my politically backed gaming controversy I'm trying to make here, so maybe... Maybe we should stop What the him. fuck is this? What am I even doing right now? I left my clean socks in the dryer down by the 231 and now some homeless guy is gonna steal them. Those are my favorite pair of socks. Like, they were those female socks that are super padded and comfortable. I had a friend buy them for me because I'm not comfortable with my sexuality. Wait, what am I doing again? Oh! Oh wait, it's a disease! From Terrace! Yeah, this will probably take out people at random, so at the very least, your spawn rate for black people should be like 40%. Some people say that they're not criminals because the city has no government law. Wait, the rebels? Not criminals. Maybe on technicality. Fuck this, I'm getting my socks. That really didn't go how I wanted it to. I don't think I'm gonna see a dollar of that Kotaku money. Is he gone? Yeah, he's gone. Good, because I got some ideas to make it. The story more realistic. Uh, more realistic? They're gonna be set in Detroit! What, like modern Detroit? President or? Trump is there! Dude, why is there a gorilla in the background? And he sends in teams to make the city great again! How the hell is it? I decided to do another mission so I can try and fight different people and see if this like weird bullet sponge thing was everywhere or just them. Thanks for getting me out of the garden. I had originally heard that this game wouldn't have any cutscenes, but wait. Is, pretty sure. is that Woody Allen? I was on my way to do the next mission but I saw it looked like a quest board. It is a quest board. Every like free MMO and every other game ever has this thing. The side missions are the same in that you defeat enemies guarding goodie boxes. And sometimes they come with hostages. Come on, get the box. Just, just, just get the box. Surprised and thankful. Excuse me? Now, on my way to the next mission, I also found out that you can't drop from high spaces or even ledges unless you press control. This doesn't seem like an issue until you find out that even the smallest elevation requires you to press a button. Oh god, I can't move! It's not. It wouldn't let me move because I had to press control to ledge. That's so... Okay, back on the road. The environments and atmosphere are good, but they're wasted on just so much nothing. This is not... what's going on here? I... is this the plague? I'm not sure I understand. Oh my god. If you explore around a bit, you'll occasionally find something that might give you some XP. Or maybe a tidbit of the story that's going on. It still gives you an incentive to look around a little. You might find some useful supplies. You can even visit the room of that one friend you have who doesn't shut up about his alternative spring break trip to Honduras. That guy helped dig a well. Those trips are the most useful thing for Latin America since Operation Condor. Some of the detail in this game world is kind of neat to look at. Like when dogs chase people away or animals fight or... what? The
Despite being more equipped than the riders, the cleaners are actually much easier to kill, mainly because they die in one hit if you shoot them in the fuel tank. I mean, it's an improvement, but now aiming for their fuel tank is the only viable strategy to make everything tolerable. In one part, you have to carry parts around, and you can only use a pistol, but shooting them in the fuel tank still works fine. When I get into a boss fight with one of their leaders, it's a lot like that other boss fight. It's not really hard, it's just really tedious. Even when I blow this guy's armor off by shooting him in the fuel tank, he still has tons of health and armor. And it's not particularly like difficult to avoid him, I could just slowly walk away. It just takes so long. Now, you might be thinking I'm an idiot because this is an RPG like Borderlands. Even with friends, I wasn't a fan of that game. Now, I don't just think The Division's a better game than Borderlands, it's also funnier. What's really interesting is the fact that The Division has no jokes in its writing. But even Borderlands works better in the enemy aspect because the world's all crazy. In this, they're trying to be hyper-realistic in its presentation, but then once gameplay starts, it just doesn't work. I love New Vegas, and it doesn't irritate me if I don't get one-shot headshots. That's because New Vegas is a role-playing game, in the traditional sense. Ubisoft is trying to appeal to the Tom Clancy one-shot, one-kill realism crowd, but also the Borderlands and Destiny loot-and-shoot grinding crowd. Do you see why these don't mix up with each other? And judging from all the delays and conflicting announcements, I don't think they knew what they were going to do. You know? They still don't know. Now I'm going to visit a shop before we go to the Dark Zone. I'd also like to thank the good people of New York for not stealing these brand new PS4s and large televisions. You can customize guns, but because they're all just like little number modifiers and not actual iron sights or anything like that, it's best just to buy a new gun. Let's do that instead. Come on, man, the law, why you playing a bland game? It don't even got respect for the Clancy name. Don't try to hide it, nigga. I know that you still bitter. Look what they did to Ironside with that Sam Fisher. I don't know, man. I just don't trust Ubisoft. Division just ain't worth all the cash it costs. And I don't know a thing about the dog zone. But I'll take a girl there when I'm on a make a moan. Make a moan, yeah. What's happening in this video? Agent, your signal is getting weak. The best items in the game, and the most danger, are in the dark zone. It's dark and mysterious. And there's also danger where you least expect it. The best equipment in the game is in the dark zone. A lot of it is found in these chests, but you have to be a certain dark zone level to open them. Now besides the loot chests, you can also get drops from enemies like the main game. You kill these guys to get your dark zone level up, but they're even more tanky and dangerous than the main game. So I'm gonna bring a friend. You up for this, Kale? Uh, Kale? Oh right. I think Kale took a trip to help out the aboriginal people. I'm sure that'll turn out fine. <laughs> If you're wondering why I didn't show solo play, it's because it's even more tedious than single player. And it just wasn't very fun. And all the marketing for the Dark Zone in this game is showing group play. I think I could say now that this is a group co-op game. Now there is solo play in the whole game, but without friends you're making it much, much harder and worse on yourself. Bringing a friend makes dealing with enemies in the Dark Zone a little more tolerable, since you have more damage to throw on them. It still takes a while, but not nearly as long as playing solo. It's also nice to have backup if you run into rogue players. You can see that there's several blocks away in the subways. It's time to talk about the player aspect of the Dark Zone. Now, I played a lot of DayZ, the Arma 2 mod, not the main game, and it might have been advertised to you as being a DayZ like game, but it is not that at all. Now, DayZ was based on having an open world with a bunch of enemies and loot and weapons. You just started letting people loose into it, seeing what their interactions would be with each other. And you thought the division was going to be like this, but it's a lot more controlled. Are you leaving? Wait, he just killed his friend in like four body shots. Where's that game? One of the first things that struck me as kind of odd was that if anyone dies in the dark zone, it tells you who killed them and where. It destroys a lot of the tension when you know who's out to kill everyone and where they are. It also makes it harder for players to try tricking or manipulating each other. It just makes things more boring. You're still free to kill oh, whoever you want. Oh, over here! Memer! His name's Memer! I'm 
Wait a minute, that's Garrus. More Mass Effect! The rogue system is by far the biggest problem of all with this kind of game mode. You can't have an open world like this and label some people as being the bad guys and some as the good. Before I talk about the problem, I'm gonna show you. Isn't it great to all get along? Oh, hey. Someone oh, shoot, I dare you. Just get so lit the fuck up by everyone else. Let's see who goes rogue first. <laughs> no, I'm not trying this shit. Why don't we all go extract them? We're all friends. How many people are in here? That means we can hold hands. Oh my god! We're all gonna extract as a family! How big people are there? I see a rogue try and take this shit on. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, I'm squatting like 20 This is so guys. stupid. <laughs> the term rogue agent makes you think it's gonna be one guy going crazy. But it's always going to be a gank squad. There are no lone rogues. If you've played EVE Online, being rogue is having a suspect timer. For the rest of you, that means if you're a bad boy, anyone else can shoot you with no penalty. But the question is, what's being a bad boy? I added another friend to the squad to find out. Now, being rogue is triggered by doing damage to another player. To avoid a grazing shot triggering it, it has to hit a certain threshold before rogue status is triggered. In the beta, it was about a third of your health bar. Now, what's important is that no matter which way the damage threshold swings, it's in no one's favor. If it's too low, it's easy to accidentally trigger it, or someone could just run in front of your gun while you're shooting to bait you into going rogue. If it's too high, then people could get a lot of damage on you, and if you start firing back and do more damage than them, you'll be the one who goes rogue. Also, because it's exclusively damage, non-lethal items don't affect rogue status. That means a guy and his friends could start EMPing you, flashbang you, and putting much of status problems on you, if you try to fight back before they gang up on you, you're the one who goes rogue again. So in this state, the rogue meta is either rewarding or punishing whoever shoots first. But what makes someone shoot first? Now the goal is to shoot people for their stuff. In the dark zone, your loot doesn't go right to your inventory. You have to extract it first. You call in a helicopter, then you have to load the loot onto it, and you're incredibly vulnerable while doing so. You can only carry a few items at a time, too. When the items are extracted, they go to your Dark Zone stash, which has limited space, but that's upgradable. So if you can kill and rob anybody anytime you want, how come there aren't a lot more rogues in this game? Well, like I said before, when you go rogue, it's very easy to find you, and no one has a punishment for shooting at you. This is especially apparent in Manhunt mode, which I'll get to. But there's more than just being easy to find. Maybe more important. When you die, you drop all the loot you're carrying. You also lose some XP and cash, which means you could go down levels. If you die as a rogue, you lose way more of all these things, plus you get a longer respawn timer. This also means if you kill someone near a spawn point, they have time to respawn, come out and start shooting at you again and keep your rogue timer up. They get money for killing you. What? What? Yes! That man just slid across the ground, like so I got the exorcist. Calm down. Somebody help. They're behind you. They're behind you. They're behind you. Come down. The rogue agent has been neutralized. He's gonna, he's gonna get behind the corner. God damn it. Fucking... I told you I had this side. The only reason you had that side is because I was <laughs> rogue agent down. Oh, there's one behind you. Rogue agent neutralized. It feels like the rogue system shouldn't be in the game. It just divides people up like it's team deathmatch. The hostile dudes, if you want to join us. There's a bunch of you uh, terrorizing people, so we're going to go kill them. It feels less like PvP, and more like trying to exploit the system into your favor. Wow, that should go in the box. In PvP or PvE is all you can do. There's even player trading in this. There's no reason to kill people when you get the best stuff by working together. 
And someone alone isn't gonna kill anybody. He'll just go rogue and everyone will shoot him. They made a survival game lacking a good enough conflict driver. You only feel compelled to go rogue if you have a numbers advantage. You can buy stuff from the Dark Zone store with your Dark Zone money, but in the very least the best stuff will drop only from the Dark Zone. I'll wrap things up by showing you a full group experience. And trust me, my guys are the best. Hands up, don't shoot. Since I had a group of guys near or at max level, I went back to do the first mission on hard. Like I said before, there's more of them and they're much tankier. Where's that guy going? <laughs> He's sitting on the floor! <laughs> Unless he thinks this is Coyote Ugly. Oh, that's a Just go in there, right, boys. Go get the tank loot. Go get the tank loot. Go get the loot. Dimitri, yeah, no! Go get it. Go, go. go get the loot, Dimitri. Go get it. That's it. The contaminated area. You are so stupid. <laughs> to get to Kobe, you'll have to pass by some contaminated areas. There used to be plenty of sick people being treated there before they got shot. It actually took even longer, but at least it's funner with friends. You know, definitely compared to this. But any game is fun with friends. Let's go back to the dark zone. Let's just hunt some boys. Load up, boys. When you or your group kills enough people, a manhunt is triggered. You are always visible on the map to everyone at all times. They get a bonus for killing you, you get a bonus for surviving. The Dark Zone has many unfair dead end choke points to hide out in. Ours was some sort of shrine to Marv from Home Alone 2. Another boy's coming up. Get him. Got grenades. I got some non lethals. Throwing three, two, whatever. Okay, bandits, I'm coming up to negotiate. Don't fire on me. They've sent me to negotiate with you. <laughs> the people of the alley want peace and trust. They know. They know! <laughs> What are we going to do, man? We're running out of ammo. I, I don't know. I only have some bullets in my pistol. <laughs> Is this boy's life? Wait, no, it's a whole new magazine. <laughs> in conclusion, the division is generic. There were fun times like these, but the bad heavily outweighed the good. I would not recommend buying this game day one, but I would tell you to keep your eye on it. Take a look at getting it in a few months to a year when Ubisoft added some more like player interaction content, made some new zones not snowy New York to it. I would only recommend getting it now if you've played the beta and had fun with it and have friends to play with. The game is having an identity crisis right now and needs time to figure things out. You could use that money for coffee. Or the gym. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps- wait. No it doesn't. This isn't my job. Oh well. I'll see you in the next review. It'll probably be this game by the way. I just know it'll be sooner than two years this time. Just remember, sleep tight and spend right. This is the love we make This is the love we make This is the love we make all the time This is the love we make This is the love we make This is the love we make
Finally.